So this medication risperidone can be helpful in treating psychosis, bipolar disorder, uh, help with mood stability, can help with agitation in cases of autism and dementia, uh, and it's a pretty unique medication. So how does it work? Well, um, risperidone is thought to block dopamine receptors in different parts of the brain. So dopamine initially is formed in the midbrain, as it is seen in this diagram here, and there's different pathways where it goes throughout the brain. It can go into the limbic pathway, to the cortex, uh, which is like the other part of the brain, and it goes to a few other parts, nigrostriatal or tubrial and defendibular pathways. And if you see on the diagram here, the dopamine is, uh, goes into this little area and binds onto the receptor, so it has its uh, interaction. That's how it communicates with the body. And the medication is thought to block dopamine binding to that interaction, which is how it has its effects. Dopamine is often used to help with like hallucinations, with delusions, uh, people who uh, aren't thinking right, maybe their thoughts are going uh, very scattered or something like that. Maybe they're paranoid, feel like people are out to get them, out to harm them. And so it's thought that this blocks dopamine in the, mes in the limbic pathway. The limbic is where emotion center is, the fight, flight, a lot of memories are stored here. So it's thought that dopamine blocking this helps with the hallucinations. Interestingly, uh, people can get psychotic or hallucinate when there is a lot of emotions that happen. People with borderline personality can get psychotic when they have a relationship breakup or when they get sudden news, and that can be due to the emotional center as well. Um, people who suffer from schizophrenia, uh, it's recommended for their families not to get too emotional at home because that can cause psychotic uh, breaks in people uh, with schizophrenia. Uh, and so that's how um, risperidone is thought to help uh, treat some of the hallucinations, delusions, things like that. It's the dopamine effect in the cortex, which is related to flat facial expressions, maybe not motivated, uh, maybe they're just not having emotional, maybe they cannot communicate that well. These typically are tough to treat with medications. Um, usually dopamine is not used in these cases. What's typically more helpful is some sort of verbal learning, some social training, skills like that. When the dopamine blocks this nigostriatal pathway, uh, that's more like the movement pathway. And so unfortunately this medication, when it blocks this dopamine pathway here, uh, it can cause movement problems. So that's why being on this medication after several months or several years, people can get shakes, they can get tremors, they can get Parkinson-like features. Maybe they get that pill rolling tremor or they have a stoop posture or slow steady gait. And so it's really an unfortunate side effect about these medications, but it happens when dopamine is blocked too long in this pathway. If it's stopped early enough, the medication or cut down, the dose is reduced, it can go back to normal. But usually it's more common on higher doses of the medication. So this medication can go as low as 0 0.5 milligrams, 0 0.25, but it's usually when you get up to like four milligrams or higher, sometimes eight, 12, those are really when these sort of um, side effects are more likely to occur. This medication is a little bit unique and can cause um, a condition called gynecomastia or even like breast formation. And this can happen in like maybe 5% of males who are on the medication. Uh, it can even get to the point where there's lactation that occurs uh, in the male, even in a male breast. It is an unfortunate side effect of these medications. Uh, there are ways to get around that. Sometimes you can add a different medication that sort of blocks that pathway, which may help. Um, this medication, just like a lot of others in the class, can cause uh, weight gain, high cholesterol, high diabetes. This should be monitored over the time. Some effects on the heart that uh, should be used cautiously in people who have heart conditions. But this medication is helpful in cases of psychosis, paranoia, delusions. It can be as a mood stabilizer in bipolar. Uh, it can help with agitation and dementia, uh, agitation and autism spectrum. And sometimes it's used as a objective treatment for depression. Um, also, this medication can come in an injectable form, uh, given once every two weeks. Somebody uh, who doesn't think they're sick or doesn't want to be on the medication, they can use an injectable form of this medication. But there are other antipsychotics that have injections uh, formulation, which are a little bit easier to prescribe and probably more preferred.